for Inside Carolina, I'm Taylor Vipolis, and this is In the Moment, where I go through some of the most memorable moments in recent UNC history with the players that made them possible. Joining me today, we've got Marcus Page, and we're taking it way back to 2014 when he scored 35 points at NC State in an overtime win. Marcus, thanks for hopping on here. I wanted to start by asking, leading up to the NC State game, did you ever notice any difference in practices or the buildups? Because at North Carolina, Roy is 32-4 and four against NC State. So there's obviously something he's doing right when it comes to that rivalry game. Yeah, he, always, uh, he would always start the week by saying it's just another game. You know, that's his favorite line that he uses. But um, you can just tell by his energy level. And it's not just him. It's the whole staff. Like, the energy level is different. The vibe is different. Um, the practices are a little more intense. The uh, film study is a little bit more precise. Like, you can just kind of feel it. And everybody wants to – everyone knows his record, and everyone wants to kind of keep that going. So uh, the intensity is definitely there. The first play I wanted to look at from that game specifically was in the first half where you steal the inbounds play and you reach back like OBJ out there. <laughs> I remember watching that game in the dorms kind of in shock that you made it look so easy. Did you even surprise yourself with that uh, athleticism there? A little bit. Um, the reason I did that is we play zone out of bounds underneath. It's something coach Williams has always done where we kind of zone up and the point guards responsibility is anything that gets thrown above the free throw line. And, uh, you know, a lot of teams just, they don't even try to attack us out of bounds. They just throw it deep. So I kind of started sneaking out just to see if I could maybe put a little pressure on them. And once I saw the pass, I kind of just took off and went for it. Um, I knew I was going to get to the ball, but I didn't think I was gonna be able to keep it in play. And luckily I was able to, keep that in play. I think we got a dunk out of it. So yeah, JP dunk. It ended up working, working pretty nice. At halftime, you guys were down eight and overall just didn't really look that great. You were two of six from the field, oh of two from three. NC State was doing a pretty good job containing you. But the one thing UNC fans found out we could always count on was second half page. What was it about your adjustments at halftime in that game and overall where second half page became a real thing? I think it is a combination of things. Um, I kind of like to start the game. I'm a very heavy rhythm guy. So, like, if I started in a great rhythm, there's no reason why I wouldn't have good first halves or anything. But it usually takes me a little bit of, like, feeling out the defense and kind of picking my spots to where I really get comfortable. Um, and a lot of times it's good to – when like, JP had a great game, and I think he kept us alive in the first half of that game, uh, where I kind of just kind of feel things out, see how it goes. But uh, Coach Hubert Davis would get mad at me a lot and tell me to be more aggressive in the first half. And for whatever reason, it was more difficult for me to get it going early. But as the heat of the game went on and as I started figuring out the way they would cover my ball screens and, like, where I could attack, it became easier. And then once I hit a couple shots, um, I always felt like if I just made one or two, I would be in great rhythm. I could just go off. Coming back from the break, you scored 31 of your 35 in the second half in overtime shooting 60% from the field and 70% from three. Can you put us in your shoes what it's like being in one of those modes where everything you shoot is going in and you're making a three look as easy as a layup? Yeah, so, I mean, a lot of times at halftime, you know, coach will bring up that I need to be more aggressive in front of the whole team. Like, guys, we need to, you know, Marcus, you need to be more aggressive. Guys, we need to set better screens and try to get him going because at that time – that year, you know, our offense was really based on pick and rolls with me and James Michael. So um, after I finally got a couple shots to go, I kind of went into that mode that people talk about. You hear people always talk about it, but you can't really, you can't explain it until you're a part of it. You know, it's like, I can't, I can't even put into words how it feels. You just, you cut your mind kind of goes blank. And anytime you get any breathing room, you just fire. And um, it honestly feels like second nature, like you're shooting in the backyard by yourself. Um, the only difference is, you're making 20,000 people <laughs> mad at you every time you score. So it was a really good feeling. And it was one of those where I started feeling like I could take off balance ones. I could take deep, deep shots. I could take faders and it was still going to be the same result. Um, it must've been, must've been the Wilson ball or something. Closing out that game in the second half with the game tied at 69, NC state could have just held the ball for the final <laughs> shot. And instead TJ Warren, he misses with seven seconds left and you get fouled recovering the loose ball with under four seconds left. What was going through your head as that sequence went down? 
Oh man, I, I my mind kind of like everyone was kind of shocked that uh, that play happened. You know, we really thought we had everything under control, and you know, that's just basketball. You know, you think you have everything good, and then there's so many variables that can happen. You know, a silly foul, a ref making a mistake, a player losing his focus for a half second. Um, but really, I wasn't affected that much by any of it because I was like like you said, I was in the zone. So I was just trying to think of what, what came next, whatever comes next. I knew we were going to be able to deal with it because I felt like I had a good command of that game. Uh, I'm sure TJ Warren felt the same way because he was phenomenal that game. One of the reasons that game was a classic going off that point you just made is that while UNC had you going crazy, NC State had TJ Warren and you guys were out there matching each other almost every possession. As the go-to guy in the offense, what's it like going shot for shot with another player where you're just trying to see who blinks first or even who gets the ball last? It was cool, man. That was really the first time I'd been a part of like a like a real duel where like two guys were just going crazy. Um, later in that season, you know, kind of happened with Bryce Cotton in, in, the, uh, in the NCAA tournament. But TJ was different than me because his his was all like – off curls, mid-range twos, floaters, bank shots. Um, it was un unreal, the offensive skill set he was putting on. He was basically like a mellow light in, in college right there. Uh, and for me, it was like just trying to find daylight to, to bomb threes. So it was kind of like contrasting styles, but it was really fun. And I've known TJ since, I mean, we played against each other in AAU, even back in like eighth, ninth grade and stuff. So I've known him for a long time. So there was, there was a little gamesmanship and uh, well, a little trash talk, but like, in a, in, a, in a love kind of way. So it was, it was fun, man. But uh, I'm glad we came out on top because we would never hear the end of it if we didn't. <laughs> <laughs> like I mentioned earlier in the second half in overtime, you were 7 of 10 from 3. So, you know, nobody would question you if you just heat check. And that's exactly what you did to start <laughs> overtime. Now we're pulling out the game film here. So where does this shot rank in terms of worst misses in Marcus Page's career? Man. <laughs> the funny thing is I was just telling you I was in the zone like and, and some of that crazy stuff happened at the end of regulation and I was like bro we're good it's overtime we got this like I'm on fire first play JP swings it to me I catch it in rhythm and I shot it and you know when you shoot it and you kind of bounce and like like your head nodding like you know it's going in it hit all backboard man uh but the good thing is for some reason it, it didn't really like in the past something like that would have caused me to stop shooting but um, in this game, I still was able to keep my composure. I knew we needed my offense. But, um, man, that's got to be one of my top five worst shots uh, of my college career for sure. In overtime with 135 left, you guys were down six. How did you and the team maintain your composure in a hostile environment to just keep trying to chip away at that lead? Um, I mean, a lot of that credit goes to coach. Um, we always practice – it, before we play big games, we practice. We have a drill called 86-80 where we're down six with – he'll change the time. He'll maybe go two minutes to go or a minute and a half to go, but we're in the bonus and stuff like that to give you situations where you have to apply pressure and make up the difference. Otherwise, you have to run. So to us, like, you know, it doesn't seem like a great situation and we'd rather not be in it, but we've been in it a million times because Coach, coach always put us in that situation um, before games. So – not panicking is a big thing, and it starts with your leader, and that was that was what Coach did. We were able to get a stop, and then I think I hit a three or two to kind of bring us back, and then, you know, the end of the game situation happened. So um, I will give Coach a lot of credit for all of his teams. You know, you've seen it happen many, many times where we look like we're down and out, and we're able to put together something crazy because we practice that situation so many times. Speaking of Coach, as the game – concluded in overtime we get a classic Roy moment where UNC fouls off the ball and he just sits down on the court and kind of in disbelief it started a small movement on Twitter called Roying I remember did you remember seeing him sit on the court or was it something you didn't really become aware of until getting on social media after the game you know actually I'm pretty sure I had no idea I know this was six years ago so <laughs> if my memory serves me right I had I don't remember him doing that but I do remember after the game, I saw one of him like in a in a little like toboggan or like a like a bobsled, and he was sitting in it. I was like, "Yo, where did like where did this happen?" So I think uh, in our team, like we we all start sending them to each other, and I think we showed him a few of them. But uh, 
but it was a really good laugh. Um, and it's a lot funnier when you win, you know. <laughs> so exactly. um, that was, you know, he's had a lot of a lot of funny moments, but that was one of my favorite like things that the internet has kind of done with him, uh, turning it into a meme. The other one is when he comes in after we beat Duke and Cameron. You know, that's that's a, a little strut. A little strut. <laughs> right. Well, so uh, uh, he just loves to have fun, but that moment was very serious, and we ended up maybe be able to make some fun out of it. Down one with less than eight seconds left, no timeouts. The most famous moment from that game, without question, is your buzzer-beating layup. Can you take us through what was going through your mind as that play developed? Uh, well, I don't even remember if we had timeouts or not, but it was right amount, the right amount of time to where Coach kind of just lets us play. He likes to say seven or eight seconds um, when it's that or under you – or when it's that or over, like around that time, you just play. Um, if not, call a timeout and try to advance the ball whatever. Um, so I just knew I was going to have a chance to attack. Um, it was not really transition, but the defense wasn't set because it was coming off a free throw. So I, I knew there was a possibility the lane might be open. Um, and then when I attacked, we were able to get the big guy out of the paint by setting that early ball screen. So then I knew, you know, there's no reason to not go in there and, and try to make it happen. Um, and there would have been enough time for offense rebound had I missed. I got to turn the corner a little bit. And once I saw daylight going to my left hand, I knew that I was going to be able to get a good shot. Um, I got smacked. I think Cat Barber slapped me on the, the the hand, so it made the shot look a little awkward. But like I said, once it got to my left hand, I I, I was pretty confident I was going to make it. To this day, UNC fans reference PNC Arena as Marcus Page Arena. Anytime a Tar Heel has a big game there, what's that like for you to think about that six years later, with really no end in sight? UNC fans still talk about this moment. It makes me happy, you know. It's it's pretty cool to see them show love like that, and I appreciate it. Uh, you know, Luke May has made a good case for it too. <laughs> um, I've seen that, and it's fun to see that. Like whenever someone else has a big game, we kind of share the uh, we share the responsibility of owning the arena, I guess. So uh, people will tweet at me and be like, "Did you see Luke? You know, he's gonna it's gonna we're gonna change the name to Luke May Arena." I'm like, "Hey, go for it, man!" Uh, so every year, somebody you know tries to one up a spectacular performance in there and uh, as long as we keep winning in there I got no problem with it <laughs> it makes me happy I will say though uh, I would I might give the edge to Luke just based on the fact that they beat us there my freshman year and I wasn't very wasn't very effective but I think I'm okay with it still being mine for now I guess <laughs> all right Marcus thanks for going back and reliving this moment in UNC history with me I had a great time catching up with you and uh I'm pretty sure UNC fans will enjoy hearing your memory of this game. Yeah, anytime, man.